Hi there, my name is Mosebe Adi. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the opiate crisis and a documentary called The Pharmacist. I'm going to give you the story in three parts. That's the background, the storyline that's followed in the documentary, as well as what I took from the story. I'm also going to give an outline of where South Africa is with regards to opiate misuse and overuse. And this is because the opiate crisis is an epidemic on its own and a whole lot of countries are affected and ours is also on the map because the opiate overuse and misuse in South Africa has been increasing um, within the past years. So I think it would be good to highlight it specifically for this video. So I will get started. So now this documentary follows the story of a pharmacist named Daniel Schneider. So this pharmacist notices an increased uh, prescriptions from patients uh, for Oxycontin, which is a, a form of a oxycodone. Um, that uh, it's a painkiller, basically. It's an opiate-based painkiller and a lot of people were coming into the facility with this prescription. A lot of them didn't seem to be needing it, but he just sat and observed and the more the numbers um, piled up, he started to see that it is uncommon and it he decided to investigate it based on that. So he looked into the the prescriptions for oxycodone within the facility that he works in, and he notices that a lot of them, over 50%, I think, were by this specific doctor called Dr. Jacqueline Cleggett. Now, he investigates it further. He reports it. He reports it as an anomaly. And um, to his luck, they were already investigating the doctor for malpractice, specifically um, over prescription of Oxy. So I think for most of us, it's common to think of the United States of America whenever we hear of an opioid epidemic, because most of the pharmaceutical companies that manufacture and market um, opiates are from the United States. And most of the documentaries that we see with regards to opiate misuse and overuse are generally from the United States. So this documentary was uh, created to highlight a certain part of the United States, New Orleans, whereby opiate misuse and overuse increased within a short period of time. And this wasn't just prescription medication, although that was the cause of the epidemic. It was also um, heroin, street heroin, as well as codeine use. So today we know that Oxy is also used recreationally and not just uh, for medical reasons so most of the people that were coming into the uh his place of work with a prescription for oxy were not coming in they didn't look like they needed to be using oxy so he did question some of the people that came in to pick up the, this type of prescription and all of them were like nah i just complained about a headache and my doctor was like here is a drug you should take this one as well So this is a four part docu-series and the first episode looks into the background story of the pharmacist, Daniel Schneider. I will just call him the pharmacist for the rest of this um, video. So it focuses on what motivated him to actually investigate drug overuse within the area that he lives in as a pharmacist. Now, the first episode shows how his son was using drugs and actually got killed while trying to buy drugs. Now, he ended up investigating his own son's murder because there was in many leads that the police were finding within that area uh but i'm gonna leave that aside so do watch <laughs> do watch that part as well so it is pretty normal however i would also consider it extraordinary that he was able to notice this anomaly and then reported it to the authorities even though after reporting it there wasn't much that was being done by the authorities so he decided to compile as much um, evidence as he could against this doctor and submitted to the dea the drug um, police people and then also to the medical board however to his luck, they were already investigating this specific doctor's pain clinic that she was running. Now, it was, uh, it is a bit abnormal that she would prescribe so many um, patients this drug because within that specific pharmacy, over 50% of the oxy prescriptions were from the same doctor, this doctor that he decided to um, investigate. So, yeah, I think it was extraordinary. So with that, the, the documentary also follows a few storylines from people who have recovered from opiate misuse and overuse. And they also highlight the heroin use within that area and how it increased after they started controlling the prescription med situation. Now, a lot of people who 
are using heroin in that area have used the prescription um have used a prescription opiate before they can start using the heroin now heroin and oxy and other opiates are basically similar in a way so they have a similar effect they are both central nervous system suppressants so it is pretty common that somebody who has used um or somebody who has been on such a painkiller like oxy or morphine or um fentanyl they would then use heroin when they can't get that medication from uh, their regular medical practitioner this phony doctor dr jacqueline claggett she well she's not a phony doctor she is an actual medical practitioner she has a medical license she's a doctor she went to school for this she is also featured in this documentary towards the end and they talk about her story and to be honest she is not remorseful she doesn't see herself as responsible for the problem that she caused within that community because a lot of the people that were addicted to oxy got the prescription drug via her she prescribed this drug to them however she does say that you can never know the degree of pain because you just go with what the patient tells you but she's just making excuses i personally think she should have seen this coming and she also says that oxy is not that addictive and she has been on it however however when she was arrested they found a whole lot of pill bottles in her house and she was admitted for um opiate use as well so she's lying i think i know i'm just gonna say that she's lying and i, I would like to applaud her for actually standing by what she did but this is not a good thing to stand by because she really did destroy a whole community with what she did now she wasn't the only person running a pill mill um there were other medical practitioners running a similar kind of pain clinic where they just prescribed oxy to pretty much everybody that walked in whether they had uh, chronic pain or acute pain or any pain at all they just ignored that these people are probably addicted and they also made a lot of money out of this but aside from the people that prescribe this the um <laughs> the other issue is pharmaceutical companies of course now this drug was uh manufactured by purdue now i don't know if a lot of people know this but there were scandals with this specific pharmaceutical companies sorry this specific uh pharmaceutical company within the past years basically there have been a lot of lawsuits against this specific company it has filed for bankruptcy once or twice or something like because they have to pay so many lawsuits because they market their products incorrectly i can say that they lie about their products they also said that oxy is not addictive but we all know now that oxy is addictive we all know now that all opiates are addictive yes all opiates are addictive yes i stand by that all opiates are addictive this does include codeine as well which is not discussed in this specific um, documentary but all opiates are a problem and all opiates have to be highlighted and that's what i'm going to do in this video <laughs> now she obviously never went to jail however her medical license was wrote she can't own uh, or run a pain clinic anymore i don't know if she can be a doctor elsewhere but uh according to the docu, she just can't have a pain clinic anymore um she i think she she pled guilty to um she definitely pled guilty to um malpractice um but she says she did it because she wanted to avoid jail um but she she really was malpracticing and it is an undeniable fact not only did she malpractice she literally destroyed a whole community um by prescribing something that the community would be addicted to so much so that when they can't get that substance they move to illegal substances and i'm not saying oxy is legal it's just a controlled substance and it just requires a um prescription so yeah so they also went for the pharmaceutical company um because they misrepresented their product and i think that was very um 
in a way, justice would have been seen. However, we are here today and we still have that same problem and it is increasing. So it's not just the fact that they had that part of Oxy where Oxy was a problem. It, it, it quickly graduated to heroin. And then um, I think today we have a problem with fentanyl. A lot of people are addicted to yet another opiate. So, um, yeah, the pharmaceutical uh, company, as I said, did get fined a lot of money. But, I mean, if they're still in business, it, I don't think it was enough. <laughs> um, but they did file for bankruptcy, so I guess it was enough to deter them from, from the whatever it is that they're trying to do. Um, of course, the people that, that manufacture this, the, the, the people that manufacturer it, think it's not addictive. It's like the cigarette people, at some point they thought it wasn't addictive, but we all know that it is. So one of the lessons one can take from this is the fact that um, heroin use sometimes does result from prescription opioids. So we would need to be quite aware and quite careful of um, this specific cause, because um, I think I know as a, a you know a no sometimes I am a patient I do see different types of doc different doctors different types of doctors and it's easy to get a prescription it's easy to lie it's easy to misrepresent a lot of things so we can avoid such things we can avoid misrepresenting ourselves and also healthcare practitioners can also learn to see such problems within patients and then address these issues. So I, I hope a lot of people do watch this and they learn from it because that was a really, really horrible doctor. And it wasn't just her. Within that timeline, they also closed down a whole lot of other pill mills. If I didn't define what a pill mill is, that's just a healthcare facility that just gives out pills. What, whatever you come in with, they just give you the pill that you want. Sometimes cash. It's usually cash payments uh, because a lot of people don't have medical um aids especially in that other country so yeah lessons so now with regards to the situation in south africa with um opiates misuse it has been increasing in the past few years however not as alarming as the other country that i was speaking about right now but it is a, a cause of concern and most of this is codeine and that is cough syrup so a lot of people use cough syrup uh, recreationally and they mix it with Sprite and then they take it. So that is very harmful for starters. It is very addictive and it is an opioid. <laughs> so it's very addictive as well. So we do need to be aware and we need to not normalize um, recreational use of cough syrup because it happens to be one of the first opioids that the youth in South Africa use. And now I found a study that I will put in the description box as well that I think it is important to look at. So I will put, there's a PowerPoint thingy on it and there's also the actual study. Now this study focuses on rehab admissions and the, it's just rehab admission, so you have to kind of see where what the scale of the problem is. Now, although it is on a low on the lower side compared to other countries, it is increasing. And one of the uh, biggest opioids that are increasing in South Africa, whose use misuse are increasing in South Africa, is codeine. Um, this is cough syrup. Now. In South Africa, the dispensing of uh, cough syrup is being controlled now. They are um, monitoring people who come into pharmacies to buy cough syrup, especially cough syrup that contains codeine. And uh, I think it is a step in the right direction. Now, within this study, they also reveal that between 2012 and 2017, about 20,000 people were admitted to rehab facilities for opiate-related drug addictions. Now, a lot of them were codeine syrup um, addictions and they were uh, prescription opiates and they were also heroin now the heroin problem in South Africa is basically um, increased use of nyalpe if you don't know what that is that is basically weed cannabis plus heroin and uh, these uh, sometimes there could be other things within it but the main ingredient is heroin as well as um, cannabis so um yeah for the past few years there has been an increasing concern of um 
misuse of prescription opiates, heroin, as well as um, cough syrup. Now, um, I wouldn't say the cause well, it is not documented within the study that the cause of the opiate crisis within South Africa could be um, similar to what is highlighted in the story. However, I think um, we caught on a little bit fast and we are controlling a lot of things because I know a lot of pharmacies in South Africa do keep a record and do monitor um patients' prescriptions. And I think we would find we would we would see it. I hope we would see it and maybe learn from specifically this documentary. And then um, maybe if there is someone within our family that might be going through such an addiction, I will also put in the description box some crisis um, lines that you can um, contact to seek assistance. Anyway, my name is Mo. I hope you enjoyed this um video do check out this documentary and see what you can take from it um i just compared it to my country <laughs> but yeah thank you for watching